YouTube. How we doing? PPS back here. It is the 16th of September. I'm recording this the day before. Um, I'll not be able to do a Saturday video for you guys, but I'm going to do this one. Um, it is the morning. This is before past the prop Friday, so I don't even know what my plays are yet for you guys there. But obviously, make sure you check that out here shortly. I'll have that out live um, in about, about three or four hours or so. Um, but I'm going to be dropping two college football plays for Saturday. This is going to drop. Um, I'll probably put it at 6 a.m. for Saturday morning um, for all you guys who have the notifications on. No issues for you guys. You guys should be ready to roll and have enough time to lock these ones in. Um, yeah, so far this season, 4-2 and two on YouTube here in college football. 1.65 units profit so far. Um, and, yeah, I, I have two plays here that will scare off a lot of betters. Okay. <clears throat> going to scare off a lot of people because these numbers are very, very high. But – I actually think that these are pretty good value in the spots that we're at. So first one's going to be a prop, and it's crazy. Mohamed Ibrahim, over 140.5 rushing yards. I know. That is unbelievable. Why are you betting a guy over 140 yards? Well, let's just say he has the best matchup in the world, right? <clears throat> so far this season, Ibrahim has 22 carries per game. Um, that's what his average is. Um, we're at 120. <clears throat> 120 yards per game on the ground. And both those games were absolutely blowouts, right? We had a 62 to nothing. Um, we had a 35, 38 point game as well in there. So he hasn't really needed to be unleashed, right? We go back to Ibrahim's early, early days, right? He was running the ball 30 plus times a game and it was no issue, right? Um, obviously last year he was injured, which is why he can come back this year. But even in that game, he was injured. He ran the ball 33 times. I love Ibrahim here just because we're going to go against, um, sorry, I can't even talk right now, Colorado. Colorado is absolutely dreadful versus the run. Um, I don't know if you saw the game last week. Air Force ran for 435 yards on these guys. They threw the ball five times and still were averaging nine yards a pop. Go to TCU. TCU, 9.2 yards per carry, and they had 30 carries for 275, right? These guys cannot stop the run. And now you're bringing in a guy who is the workhorse, right? In both of those scenarios with Air Force and with TCU, they had multiple guys sharing the workload. Ibrahim is not going to do that. Ibrahim will not. <clears throat> he will run the ball 35-plus times. If he throws the ball 25-plus times, with his averages, he should hit this number. Whereas in this game, I think they're just going to run all over him. I don't even think they're going to need to get into the RPO. Right. And that's what they run at Minnesota. I think that actually really helps Ibrahim because the linebackers cannot crash down. If the linebackers crash down, you can just flip it right over the top of them. Right. That's what the RPO and that's why uh, a team like Minnesota excels in it because they do have a back like Ibrahim who is unbelievable um, in space, um, obviously in between the tackles as well. I expect this game to stay a little bit closer than usual. Right. Obviously, 27 point spread. But when you're used to playing New Mexico State, um, and blowing them out and obviously winning the other game 30, by 35 points. If this one stays within 21 to 28 for most of the game, I think we see Ibrahim um, crush this number. I would not be surprised to see him at 200. Um, this is the worst rushing defense in the NCAA. Air Force is the number one rushing offense, and Minnesota is not far behind at number two. So they are very good at running the ball. They have brutes up front. Uh, they're going to be very, very tough this year in the Big Ten um, for teams um, if they can get ahead of them, right? It's a very tough offense to stop when you have um, them trying to burn clock. They're, they're very good at winning the ball. So I know 140 yards, it's tough to push the over on it, but sign me up for it. Ibrahim over 140 and a half rushing yards. All right, guys, if you could <clears throat> smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. <clears throat> Make sure you know when everything goes live, right? We got to make sure that you guys are here and ready for our live stuff. Um, but, yeah, we have one more play here. Um, a, a team I backed quite a bit already. <clears throat> Maryland, SMU, over 73, minus 110. I know, crazy number. Honestly, this probably would have been a prop as well. Um, I love Tanner Mordecai this game. Uh, but they have no Mordecai props out at the moment. <clears throat> 
They do have Taga by Lowell over 310. I think that's a good look, but it's minus 150 on DraftKings. They know what they're doing, right? They know what they're doing. Um, they're not going to give you a higher number at better odds because I think they know this is about to shoot out, right? But let's look at the numbers here. Obviously, SMU has played absolutely nobody, North Texas and Lamar. Um, their defense has shown up in those games. I think they've only allowed like a 43% completion percentage in some pretty, pretty, pretty good numbers, right? But – you're, you're going up against a Maryland offense who is rolling right now, right? They crushed Buffalo. Um, they crushed Charlotte. <clears throat> but in that game against Charlotte, Charlotte had 300 yards passing, right? And Mordecai is a stud. He is an absolute stud. He's got an elite receiver on the outside. And Rashid Kelly, three touchdowns, 120-plus yards in both games. Um, Mordecai last year had over 300 yards in seven of his 11 games. This guy will – want to get into a shootout and with this smu defense i would be surprised if it doesn't right maryland has obviously talking about Loa there um but they also have Jarrett, who is elite he's very very good you also have um a new guy coming into the mix jay sean jones um he is actually the number one receiver so far with 141 um on 10 catches two touchdowns they also have copeland over 100 yards through two games um Desmus, I guess, just took a massive step back. He's like their fifth leading receiver. But they have three dudes over 100 yards so far. They spread the ball out. Talking about low is averaging 11 yards per pass right now, per attempt. Um, and this SMU team has not faced any challenge like this. But that goes the same way for Maryland, right? They faced Buffalo um, early on in the season already. Obviously, they crushed him, and I get it. They did what they needed to do in the spots that they were given. But they haven't faced a guy like Mordecai. You got Buffalo and then Charlotte. It's just... Mordecai is very, very good. I love betting on Mordecai's overs. Um, the dude just slings the ball. First game of the year, he had like 430 yards passing. Um, and obviously, Rasheed Kelly had like 150 yards receiving that. So um, we have great offenses attacking each other. We have defenses that are leaky. Um, and I expect to see some points here. Um, I think it's really the first team to maybe two stops in this game wins this game. So I would not be surprised to see this at like a 30 – if it gets to 38-35, we get a push here. Obviously, that's not what we're going for. But that, I think that at minimum, both teams get to 30 points here. Um, and one of them probably runs away with it a little bit at the end. So, sign me up. I really like this spot. I think we could see this game up into the hundreds. Honestly, it's that type of game. Maryland SMU over, 30, or over 73 um, for the full game there. All right, guys. We're putting our 4-2 and two record on the line here. Drop a like if you're tailing. Maryland over 73. Ibrahim over 140 and a half. <clears throat> have a good one, guys. Like I said, this is uh, recorded early. So if you have any questions, still DM me. I should still be having my phone around. But I will not be on YouTube here. So have a good one. Best of luck. And, uh, yeah, let's win a couple bets.